Hello, my name is Danielle and welcome back to Dano Does Things. This week I have made this dress to help bring awareness to Fashion Revolution Week. If you haven't heard about Fashion Revolution, I highly recommend checking out their website, which I will link to in the description box below. Disclaimer, I am not associated with Fashion Revolution in any way. I just am a supporter of what they do and their ideals. Fashion Revolution Week is an annual week of action and it is held around the anniversary of the Rana Plaza collapse. Rana Plaza was a building in Bangladesh where clothing was being manufactured for some of the major global retailers. Even though the workers brought to the attention of supervisors that there were cracks in the buildings and that they were afraid to continue working there, production continued and the building collapsed, killing over a thousand people and injuring thousands more. The tragedy was preventable and fashion revolution grew out of its wake with this simple belief that people shouldn't be exploited for fashion and shouldn't die for fashion. This year, the theme for Fashion Revolution Week is money, fashion, power. One of the main focuses this year is the fact that the majority of people who make our garments are not paid a living wage. One of the challenges from Fashion Revolution Canada was to make a garment and record how long it took you to make and then see how much you would have to pay yourself in order to give yourself a living wage. So I'm going to take you through the process of making this decidedly mediocre and simple dress and see how long it takes me and talk about why that matters. As I sew up this dress, I want to make an important distinction between a living wage and minimum wage. A living wage is the hourly rate at which a household can meet its basic needs. It is the wage one would need to receive in order to cover all their basic expenses. That includes food, clothing, and shelter, as well as other things like household expenses and childcare. But even a living wage doesn't account for owning a home, trips, debt payments, or long-term savings. A minimum wage is just the legislated minimum, and those who make a minimum wage would have to work much longer hours in order to cover their expenses. Though there have been some improvements over the years, many textile and garment workers are still not paid enough to afford basic expenses. And low wages are not the only thing textile and garment workers face. Hazardous working conditions, harassment, and violence persists all too often. And even though raising people from poverty and providing them with safe, equitable working conditions should be excuse enough to change how we think about our clothing, fashion also wreaks havoc on the environment and is a huge contributor to waste. Fast fashion companies are notorious for creating hundreds, even thousands of new styles every month and mass producing them. They are usually low quality and not meant to last, and often the trends fall off quickly which leads to tons and tons of textile waste. But higher-end brands are not exempt from contributing to waste either. Luxury brands often destroy unsold product instead of having to sell it at reduced prices as a way of stock control so they can continue to give off the impression of a luxury brand. You may be wondering what you can do to reduce your impact and if you can affect the global textile and garment industry. I know it's easy to feel apathetic because it is often on companies and governments to make the real systemic changes but those changes may be done quicker and easier when it is demanded by the majority. The first step is understanding where your clothes come from and not purchasing from companies that support worker exploitation. This may require some digging and some investigation on your end as it's often difficult to be able to draw a straight line from the producer to the consumer. Oftentimes it's easier to find smaller or local companies that are transparent with their supply chains rather than figure out the supply chain of some major conglomerate. And as with everything, money talks. Spend your money on clothing that is made of high quality materials and was made by individuals who are paid appropriately for their time and expertise. The only thing I will say is to watch out for greenwashing, in which companies use buzzwords that don't really mean anything to give the impression that they are operating in a humane and conscientious way. Shopping from local creators is a great way to start your own fashion revolution. Often locally made clothing can be more expensive, but try to get classic pieces that are well made and see them as an investment. Then the next step in your resolution is to maintain these clothes and take care of them. Wash them only when needed and in the way instructed, keep clothes stored appropriately, and of course learn some basic mending. 
being able to do very basic repairs like sewing on a button or fixing small holes and tears are crucial for extending the life of your clothing. And the longer you can wear your clothes, the less you'll need to buy in the long run. In general, reducing the amount of clothing we buy is helpful as well. Try not to give into 10 second trends and fast fashion. Think about your style and your wardrobe and buy pieces that already go with what you have. Make sure you're buying items that can be worn multiple times in different ways and will last you a long time. Of course, if you do want to do some more fun shopping, I highly recommend thrifting and secondhand shopping. You're usually spending less money unless you're shopping proper vintage, and so you may not have to worry as much about the piece being classic. Plus, you've just saved something from the landfill. Another thing I often get from thrift stores is sewing patterns and fabric. It's a great way to get into making your own clothing. Working with cheaper thrifted fabric has helped me not to feel so nervous about sewing. That way, instead of buying $40 worth of fabric, I'm playing around with seven bucks worth and it doesn't feel as intimidating. Of course, making your own clothes isn't for everybody, but it is another way you can join the fashion revolution. As you saw, this dress took me nearly 11 hours to make, and I will admit though, I am a slow sewer. But we'll multiply that by the living wage where I live, which is Winnipeg, Canada, and the living wage for here is $16.15. So I would have to pay myself $177.65 just for labor alone. And that doesn't even factor in the costs of materials and equipment. So if you're wondering then, how can I go to a fast fashion company and get a dress for $10, the answer is they cut corners with their workers. They pay them measly sums and have them working in hazardous conditions, all so that we can get the latest fashions that we'll probably just throw out in less than a year. While I was making the dress, I talked about some alternatives, as well as some things you can actively do to ensure that you're not contributing to the exploitation of garment workers. I highly encourage you to do some more research on the topic and think about where your clothes come from and who made them. Fashion Revolution Week runs until April 24th, so check out their social media and their website for more information. Thanks so much for joining me and we'll see you next week. Do I jump? <laughs> Do I up? Good girl. Right, Pop. Thank you.